Hey, Dan Barnes here for Red Barnes Audio, and today we are looking at Punch and Roll with Studio One for audiobook narration. And this is part two of a series, so I assume that you've already watched part one, and now you're back for the setup. Now, I break the setup down into three main areas. Number one, we're going to look at the hardware setup. And then number two, we're going to set up your metronome, which controls the pre-roll for punch and roll, so you can configure yours to the amount of pre-roll that you want. And then the third thing we'll do is we'll do a little bit of housekeeping, where we set up keyboard shortcuts and a couple other little hints and things that make it easier and more effective when you're in doing punch and roll. So I always look forward to your feedback. My contact information is at the end, but here's the demo for setting up punch and roll in Studio One. So the first thing we did, step one, let's make sure our hardware is set up. If you see this red slash anytime, you need to click on it and go in and set up your audio device. If this ever comes up, by the way, there's another way to get to this. I could use the Studio One menu and choose Options. And by default, I think it comes in at General, switch over to Audio Setup here. So either the menu or if you click on that red slash, then that will bring you to this, this place as well. By default, doesn't it doesn't know what your device is. If you do not see your device, be sure it's plugged in, be sure you have the latest drivers already installed before you open up Studio One. That'll make your life easier. So once, you, once yours is there, pick it. If you have any problems with that, you're probably going to have to go to the Personas forum and go into the user support and ask a question about your hardware. And somebody will already be using your hardware, and they're going to tell you within an hour or five, who knows, usually very quickly it surprises me there's geeks sitting there 24 7 it seems like and they answer questions but for most people you're going to find your device you're going to select it and you're up and running well now that we have our hardware all set up we're going to do some workspace configuration and we're going to make sure our metronome set up and add our keystroke combinations so that it's all just easy to use so we have to have a song open because a lot of the interface elements are only available when a song is up so I'll create an empty song. By default, it comes in this time signature. You will notice right here, it's set to 4-4. And I am going to change this. I like this set at 2-4. I'll explain why I do that later. And on every song, I make sure it's set to 2-4. And I set my template up that way. And by default, I believe the uh, it's, it defaults to bars. I switch this to seconds. Funny thing is, after doing this, it really wouldn't make any difference. It would come out the same. But... I do it anyway. I switch it to seconds. It's 2-4. I say OK. Trust me on that. By default, over on the right-hand side, it shows this little browse window. The place that we really care about most of the time are these effects. These are great. They're extremely high quality. I'm not going to go over the details of them now, but you want to get yourself into Studio One Artist because you are going to use some of these to give yourself a a higher quality recording. It just makes life easier and there's some great tools here that we'll go over another time. But I close that window for by default. I don't need it open. So you close that window and then the one thing you do is you need to add a track. By default the settings that are here are pretty much what we're going to use. I change this to the first one. It'll say sub out on yours unless you change the name like I did and you choose OK. So that gives us a track. A couple little interface quirks here that I'm going to just I'm going to tell you about so you don't fall in the same traps I do. I wanted this taller. I like my tracks taller. And so I grab this section right here and pull down. Note, by default, I'm, I wanted to go in the middle here and do this. You can't do this over here on the right-hand side. You must go over to the white section here, and then that allows you to adjust the height of that track. The other thing that's just, it, it baffled me at first, if you want to change where the recording is going to start, then you need to set the cursor, set the playhead, and you can only do it in this little strip. So when you start and go crazy to try to get it where you want, go click up here, and it works fine. Once you've done this for a little bit and you know where it is, it becomes easy. It's just not obvious. Big difference between those. Get yourself a track, get it set up, and then once you have this, now this is the part that really applies to punch and roll. We're going to set up our metronome. By default, this time signature came in at 2-4, but if yours does not read 2-4, then click on the number 2. It'll give you this box and go up here and set it. You want that on 2-4, and you want the default left at 120. See this little wrench down here? I'll move my mouse away. There's a wrench. And I click on the wrench, and there comes up my metronome setup. Here's where you set up pre-roll. We set up pre-roll. You can ignore this word bars. Because we've set this to 2-4, 
bars and seconds are now equivalent. Ignore the bars. Ignore the man behind the curtain. Set that to the number four to begin with. Understand that four is not a magic number. I have a narrator that likes it at three seconds. You might like it at five or six. What I do recommend is start with four, and then shorten it a second, then lengthen it a, se a second while you're recording, and see what you like. Don't be a slave to my setup. Fix it so that it's comfortable for you. If you want more time, that's fine. And then the only quirk is when you press this, I'm thinking, ooh, it's going to close it. I want to save it. Well, it actually does save it. So when I go back to the metronome, it saved my pre-count in four. If I had set that to five, it would save that. It's the only thing we need to set up. Now our pre-roll is set to four seconds. Yours might be five. It's something else. But it's easy. And once it's set up for this song, you don't have to think about it again. Then the other thing I like is I like to have a keyboard shortcut to make this work. And the keyboard shortcut that I use is I have set the R key for record. So we go up to the Studio One menu, choose Keyboard Shortcuts, and then we, now if you know what you want, we know what we want, we want to do Record. Record. Otherwise, if we don't do that, we don't type that in, then we need to scroll through 250 different commands and find which one we want to assign the keyboard shortcut to. So it's a whole lot easier just to say Record. And then we happen to know yours could be scrolled here, and you'll scroll through the record functions until you find the one that's in the transport. That's the one we want. Now, interestingly enough, already the numpad is set up. The, the asterisk key on the numpad is set up for us to already do record. But I don't want to do that. That's my mouse hand in, in my case. So if I click below here, it will allow me to add a second keyboard shortcut. And I'm just going to press the R key. And it warns me, whoa, key is already assigned to track R. Well, I probably told you a whole lot earlier that in the musical context, you arm and unarm tracks all the time. In our context, we only have one track, so I can click that one time, but I just restart the recording over and over again. So I'm going to say, hey, I know that. And as long as I don't have this one clicked, if I have this, it's going to replace. But I'm going to take this one, I click below, put the R key in, and choose a sign, and I have this magical thing. Two items, two keys are assigned to record on my keyboard. And that's unique. A lot of DAWs, a lot of the programs out there, you can set any key that you want, but you only have one of them. Here, you could have two or three. So if you use different mouse hands, no matter what you're doing, you can have more than one if that's better for you. So I love that little feature there. And I'm going to choose OK. And then now I can start recording either with the, the asterisk or I can use the R and both of them will start. So Control, Control Z, Undo, R works for me all the time, or just R, depending on what I'm doing. Great, great little feature there. So that ends in terms of setting it up to actually record. Everything will work here, pre roll will work. Let me talk through a couple bonus things in terms of the setup. You can ignore these if you want, but I'll tell you what I like to have. I like to show this mix panel. And by default, it doesn't. It shows up exactly like this, where the mix panel is below my tracks, and I don't need some of the items here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you what I do. First thing I do is I break it out. I use this little right here. There's this button that has an up arrow, and I click on that. And you can't see it, but it just jumped over to my other monitor. So I have a dual monitor set up. And it kind of was thinking, hey, Don wants it over there on his other monitor. And that's just because one time recently I had it over there for something I was doing. And it's going back to where I had it before. By default, I don't like this setup. Uh, it works great in a music context where somebody could have 20 or 30 tracks. For us, I don't like it. So I go through and I take the first two icons here, which make it shorter and skinnier. And then I also turn off instruments. I turn off banks. And I only put input and output. And I double click on this one. Second one, this is my input that's coming in. And I and then what I do is drag this down to the bottom and I make this a little narrower and pull this guy down and let me resize it. And I'll show you what I do. I actually size it to my screen because I have my script to the right when I'm narrating and I have this set up approximately here. And this is exactly how I, how I have mine set up. I actually drag this one over a little bit. And I also have this open as well. So this is exactly what mine looks like in context. If you were watching the other video, you saw it look just like this. 
There are 25 different things you can customize here, and I'm going to talk about those in another video. Just way too much for this one video. So now this is how mine's set up, and I can see these meters. I also, there, if you have Studio One Artist or above, there's some great things here, and I'm going to have my pre-record stack, and I'm not going to tell you about everything that I do here, but I have a mix tool, which is my volume control. I have a limiter set up, and I have an expander set up, and this way I can never go over minus one, no matter how, how much I shout into the mic, it automatically limits it, and it's a great quality piece of software that it works very, very well. You can't overload this thing. It's very graceful the way it works, so I'm really happy with that tool. So that tells you your basic setup, and when you have this, the next thing you do is say File, Save as Template. And when I do this, I can go out. Now, I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to replace an existing template. I have a template out here. Let me open this over here so you can see it. I have one called Audiobook Don. I'm going to cancel out of this because I do not. But I would say open. If I wanted to update my template, it will then rename this. It knows where I have it saved. And then I could choose OK, and it would replace my existing. In your case, if you don't have a template already, once you do File Save As, I should tell you, I just noticed that I forgot to arm this track. I would also arm this track. Click on this right here, and this tells us this will be the track that it will be recording when I press Record, which is right down here. This is the Record button, or I have my keyboard shortcut. So when I save it, the template again, and if I had forgotten, after I had, this is the great thing. I didn't see that, okay? You know, we all make that kind of mistake. So if I make that kind of mistake, what do I do? I fix it. Another thing I would do is reset this cursor back to zero. Press the zero key a couple times, it'll be back at zero. And now I go in and I do save as template. And even if I had saved it five minutes ago, I say replace existing. I go in and find my template. And I say okay. And then it would replace my existing template with my setup here. It doesn't make any sense for me to do that because I already have it all set up. But it means that you can fix something if you miss something. And the great thing about this is next time you come in, this is armed. This little console down here is pre-set up for you. The metronome is pre-set up with 2-4 time signature, the tempo. And if you pull up this, it's going to be set to whatever you set it the last time you saved the template. So all these items are being saved with this, including the layout. So it's very handy. It's very quick. And I'm very impressive in terms of the way they do that. So you can customize yours. And you can see there's one other thing I talked earlier about turning off this snap. I didn't turn it off in this template because I've done multiple versions here. And I didn't notice that I didn't shut it off. So I would go in and say, oh, cripe, I didn't do it. And I do save as template. If you, want it, if you have audio in there, it will save with your template. So if you have audio, delete your audio out. And then your template starts off nice and clean. And this concept, I mean, I could show you 20 more little things you could do to make this even better. I'll skip it for right now. But that's way more than you need to know to do punch and roll. And punch and roll, you only need to have the hardware working so that you can record. You need to have the metronome set up. And then in my case, I always think it's nice to have the keyboard shortcut set up. That's optional. It makes things faster and easier. But you wouldn't have to do that. The only thing you really have to do, as long as your hardware is working, once you set up the metronome and click that little pre-roll button and engage pre-roll down here on this little tool strip, then life is good. And by the way, the default, why I don't like the default setup, where originally this was down here and this was right here, is I'm always looking for efficiencies in software. And when I have it arranged the other way, if I'm using the mouse, which you know I just told you don't use the mouse, okay? But sometimes I do. I'm not saying don't ever use the mouse. Most of the time I don't use the mouse. But you have to go to the top with the mouse to click. And if you're going to go for the record button, now the record button is much closer to this area. I'm going to have to set the cursor of the playhead. And now this is close. If I leave that at the bottom of the display, I just have farther to travel. And yeah, it's six inches and, you know, I'm not going to get carpal tunnel doing it. But I'm always looking for a better way to do things. Therefore, this is a better way to have this control because the two things that you do all day long, you reset the cursor and then you press record. I very often do it with the keystroke, but I get it close there in case I want to do something different. If I want to play something back, I know it's the space bar will play back my audio once I have audio in there. But, you know, sometimes I just out of habit will use the mouse. 
Not very often, but if I do, I want it close. So that's why this is closer, and I want to read these displays, and I just don't want it. This, uh, once it's set up, I don't really need it. I use this to verify that everything's working the way I would expect. I can look at these meters and instantly tell you, yep, I'm in my normal setup, or whoa, a knob must have changed someplace because those meters are not the way I expect them to be. So great tool, great setup. I hope you enjoy this. This is way more than what you need, but uh, I do hope it helps. And if it does, let me know. Uh, share this with other people. Tell them it's good or tell them it's bad, but you know, don't keep it to yourself. If you see anything that I missed or you want to talk about, get in touch with me. I mean, I do charge money if people want me to do a complete setup, but I'll answer simple questions. If, it, if I can do it in less than two minutes, you know, I'll answer a question for somebody. But I do charge people if they want a complete setup. I just I don't have time. I got plenty of work of my own. Well, I hope that was helpful in terms of your setup for Studio One and a couple other housekeeping things. This is my setup as of today. Tomorrow, next week, next year, I promise you I'll have refined some things because great people like you have thought of something or discovered something that I didn't think of and you were nice enough to feed it back. So when you discover something interesting about Studio One and this process of punch and roll or anything else, please get in touch with me. Let me know the cool little tip that you found that makes it better or easier. And don't be afraid to find a better way to do anything that I showed today. This is not the only way. This is one way. This is what I do today. But we're always improving this process and I need your help to do that. Number two, we do narration and processing for a lot of narrators. So if we can ever help with that sort of thing, find me. And then the final thing is, we're going to do another one of these series on exporting from Studio One because there are some things in the mix down that when you understand it, makes it easy to get mono files out and meet ACX requirements and I can help with that as well. So I'm going to do a third video. I've had a request for that. So you'll see that at some point. It might be up today depending on when you're watching this, but don't take anything I say today as the only way. And of course, I look forward to seeing you on the wires.